Well, hey, all my artist friends. Welcome back to Miss Raga's Art Room. I apologize, I'm a little stuffy today for this video guide. So if I need to take a break and blow my nose, I do apologize for that, right? Sometimes, sometimes colds happen. Okay, so for today's draw along, we're gonna keep our drawing skills up by trying to draw some soft folds and experience a potentially new medium for you. Now, you may have used charcoal pencil before, you may not have. We're gonna be working with a combination of um, black charcoal pencil and white charcoal pencil. Um, I recommend that you also get yourself some Q-tips to blend with. And um, if you're working in class, oops, we'll escape artist pencil there. Grab yourself a chamois cloth, um, or if you don't have a chamois, tissue or paper towel will work really great. Let me just check to make sure I'm centered on the screen. Looks like I am, just about. Now, just so you know, not cheating, I've got my fabric I'm drawing off to the side here. It just doesn't fit for me to have everything on the screen at once. You need to kind of have the overhead shot first. So let's start with the basic contour outline. Okay, and what I'm going to be using is a technique called sighting in, in the, with this drawing. And what sighting is, is when we hold out our arm, straightened at arm's length, we close one eye, and we use our pencil to try to capture angles for the outline of the fabric. So what you'll be seeing is my arm going off screen like this, sighting angles, and then I'll be bringing an angle back to the paper. Okay, um, this was demonstrated in class. If you missed it, make sure you come see me for, um, for a little catch up, a little follow up on sighting angles. Okay, so first let's start with our basic contour outline. And I'm gonna start by sketching in the rough outline of this fabric. I'm just using my pencil as kind of a guide to figure out the basic outline shape first. Then I'll work for the interior folds. I'm going to represent everything as a line to begin with. And then we'll turn those lines into fold. So I'm closing one eye, I'm holding my arm out straight, and then I'm just lining my pencil up on the angles of the fabric to sketch in what I see as the basic shape. Now here's the key. You can't tip your pencil forward like this. This gives you no information. You kind of have to pretend like there's like plexiglass or something in front of your hand, and it can only turn left or right this way. If you point at it, you don't capture any angles, but if you turn that left or right, that's how you're able to get some of those angles happening in the picture. And it's okay if fabric folds go off your page, like this one's going to. This one goes like way out and then comes back in. So this fold doesn't come back on until like over here and then like goes off the page again. Whoa. Okay, and then comes back on somewhere over here. So it's okay for your drawing to be cropped by the edge of the paper. Now this technique can also be called enveloping, meaning we're creating an envelope or an exterior frame a little pocket, if you will, that our overall picture or our overall drawing can fit within. Okay, there it is going off the edge there too. Okay, I'm going to start working my way kind of back down this side here. bell change there. We'll ignore that for now. Okay, and the rest of these folds are going to kind of work their way off the paper as well. All right, now that I have kind of the exterior contour outline shape, I'm going to start working in for some of the details. And the folds in the fabric I'm going to represent for now 
just as, whoops, just as line. So I'm going to come in and just represent these fabric folds as just basic line. A lot of what I already have drawn in kind of helps me with that. You almost like, I like to think of it like I almost start playing a game of connect the dots. Like this fold happens down here and comes across this way. Now I want you to capture as many wrinkles and folds in the fabric as you can. It's okay to simplify one. This is, this is just a draw along. This is a practice drawing. We're experiencing a new technique, a new media, right? But the more we can challenge ourselves to do really difficult technical drawing, whew, the better. Now don't worry about details if like on your fabric you have like some of my napkins weren't pure white. They have like a silver edge to them or something like that. Don't, don't worry about that. Just ignore, ignore those and draw just as if it were like one plain piece of regular old white fabric. This one's a little tricky. This is like foreshortened. It goes off the paper this way. Foreshortened means when an angle or a fold in your drawing is like coming at you. Okay. Underneath this fold I have Just observing different angles and folds I happen to see. I think sighting really helps me with my drawing as far as what I'm seeing happening in the drawing. There are lots of different techniques for drawing and you'll the more you draw you'll discover what works for you. This kind of goes off the paper this way. This fold kind of goes off this way. There we go. All right, and that's kind of a basics of what I see in this fabric. Now the reason we've sketched with white is because we don't want to have any harsh outlines with the black pencil. So we're sketching with white, we'll do our shadows and then we'll work back towards light afterwards. Okay, but speaking of shadows, let's now sketch in the contour outline of any cast shadows we see. Now I have a strong light source coming up from this side of the drawing because of the overhead lights. So I'm gonna sketch in where I see any really dramatic cast shadows, either on the folds of fabric, like I see happening here, okay, or where the fabric sits under the table or against the, uh, the pin board I have here, that foam core pin. Don't worry about representing the table line of the phone cord. For now, we're focused just on the fabric. Okay. Now what we'll do is we're going to grab our um, dark charcoal pencil. So the first thing I want you to understand, let's flip our paper over for a second. Oh, it'd be good if I wrote my name. Okay. First thing we want to understand with charcoal is that it's not pressure. You know, you press hard, you get a solid black mark. You press light. You get pretty much a solid black mark. What we do with the charcoal is we actually layer it up. We work almost exclusively with light pressure. 
and then we, as we smudge, we can darken it by building in more and more and more layers of charcoal that we rub into the paper. Now the advantage of charcoal is it's really smudgy. The disadvantage of charcoal is it's really, really smudgy. Um, it's super easy to erase. The black charcoal, kind of no matter what, will still stain the paper a little bit. Do you see that? So that's why we always sketch with the white charcoal so that we don't have um, those, those stains. But once again, like I said, the smudginess of it, ooh, check that out, right, is what's difficult to control as well as difficult, um, but also, I'm sorry, not difficult, but also makes it a great, wonderful, blendy, um, blending drawing medium. Okay, so let's flip our paper back over and start with some shadows. So what we're now gonna do is look for some form shadows on the fabric around those folds where we see the fabric kind of like fold onto itself. And so we're starting with light pressure only. You should be barely touching the charcoal to the paper, because we're gonna let kind of the charcoal and its blendiness do the work for us. So we don't have to use a lot of pressure. So we're gonna take our Q-tip. I remember when we're smudging with the charcoal, we're not just smearing it all around. No, we are guiding it, we are directing it, we are drawing with that blender. If you feel like you've smudged too far, go ahead and erase. Remember you can also use um, your chamois cloth is great for this. The chamois kind of picks up more of the, pen the uh, charcoal pencil and lightens it, so that's just something to keep in mind. What you're going to start doing is turning those fold lines into shape. So we're start starting with the darker charcoal first. Okay. Can definitely see a line there. Again, don't if you've got a silver napkin or whatnot, don't worry about the glittery bits with it. We're not gonna be drawing that. We're just focused on trying to create some of these soft fold transitions using the charcoal. And I personally kind of just like to work my way top down. That way I'm not like smearing a lot over top of my paper. Although now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm gonna get myself a shade guard. So I'm gonna pause here for a moment grab myself a shade guard, and I will be right back. Ooh, pardon me. Shade guard and tissue break. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna rest my hand back down. Again, I'm observing my fabric that's right in front of me. Now, if you are working on this at home because you missed our fabric draw along, make sure you're getting the photo of the fabric from me um, so that you've got a good reference to draw with if you're not coming in and working during your flex to catch up on this. Okay, because those are really your two options with this project. You either have to take it home with you, do a little bit of extra catch up work at home, or if you prefer, you can certainly come in during a flex and we can work right from the fabric directly. So remember, you're drawing with the blender, you're not just smearing everything all over the place. Right? You're directing that shadow. Now the reason we work on tone paper is it, it gives us a middle value for free. It actually makes it so we have to do less drawing work with the charcoal, which is really, really nice. One of my favorite things about working with the charcoal. Now charcoal drawings you do have to fix with spray fix or hairspray once they're done so they don't continue to smudge everywhere. So if you've got some regular old hairspray, um, not the pump style hairspray, you do actually need to use like um, 
like the kind that has aerosol spray so the mist is finer and you don't get a bunch of spots on your 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 um, on your picture and you can see how once I start turning those lines into form shadows into value shapes dark and then later light with our white colored pencil you can see very quickly how this fabric starts to look soft right and take on those soft um, folded forms okay, I'm gonna go for a little bit more dramatic buildup of charcoal here because I've got a pretty deep form shadow it kind of starts up here actually exaggerate a bit more up there and then comes further down the uh, fabric into this shape here I'm going to be layering down a lot of charcoal. Remember, I'm barely pressing on the pencil at this point. Um, right? I'm really using just that soft pressure. Um, it seems obvious, but obviously do not um, like wipe your eraser crumbles away on this drawing. Um, just shake your drawing paper off. Let's layer a bit more in where it's really concentrated under the fold. Don't be afraid to use that eraser. You know, if you feel like, ooh, I've over smudged somewhere, or just doesn't look quite right, just go back with that eraser. That's what it's there for. I'm just going to clean up my edge of this shadow a little bit. You'll want to roll up your sleeves. It's normal for charcoal to kind of end up a little bit everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's continue on. Working down this front section of the fabric here. And you want to avoid just outlining your lines in black, right? You are truly turning them into value shapes, form shadows. Those lines are going to take on fabric shape. And sometimes that can be tricky too because we just kind of like start like, okay, yeah, I've got this and we just start almost outlining the line work we've already done and we don't realize no that's actually not what we want to do. And it takes it takes practice too, ladies and gentlemen. Um, artists alike to uh, to really get good at observing those shadows. That just comes with practice. The more you draw, the better you'll become at observing shadow shapes, value shapes, right? Those form shadows. Remember, shadows that are on objects, we call them form shadows. I'm going to switch over to my chamois here. It's kind of like a little bit subtler part of the shadow transition. And you really do start to almost draw, well not almost, you, you really are drawing with the blender as much as you are drawing with the charcoal pencil. You're directing the movement of that charcoal to create 
the soft fold. A lot of times with charcoal, I almost feel like I end up drawing more with my blender than um <laughs> than with the actual uh, with the actual pencil itself. It's kind of funny to think about sometimes. too much there. There we go. Let's pull that edge back out. All right, you can start to see some of those soft folds coming out here. Let's let's continue on down the fabric and really what this just takes is time and patience as you shade. you see the folds happening, where you see those form shadows drawing in the shape you see. Now, if you think you've got it, I mean, at any point, feel free to pause the video, back it up, right? If something's not making sense, you're like, wait, I just, I'm not getting that. Go back and rewatch a second, you know, a section of it, watch technique. Um, you know, if you feel like, yeah, I, I've got this part, feel free to fast forward in the video to where I pick up with um, the white charcoal pencil. If it's all, you know, making sense, you know, the video can kind of go at your, at your pace, depending on how you feel with your drawing confidence with the charcoal. This edge, we've got so we're just trying to get the feel of what those soft folds look like. And I've got a pretty dramatic cast shadow that comes over here, so I think we're going to keep most of this pretty light. You just get a little bit more of that kind of darker gray tone. There. Okay, let's go underneath this edge and get more of that cast shadow in that you were seeing before. Just want to layer quite a bit of charcoal up here. Cast shadow kind of comes, comes down and then goes really wide underneath that roll edge of that fabric. And kind of comes to this corner. And this corner alike. Like so. There we go. Okay, and let's give this a bit of a blend as well. I'm going to grab a fresher end of a Q-tip.
that's looking pretty good. All right, let's start extending over more to this side of the fabric, and then we'll get on to more um, exterior cast shadows and highlights and everything. Okay, so let's come over here. And one thing you'll notice too with charcoal, you think like, wow, this should be faster, right? It's really smudgy. We can build up value really quickly. It actually takes quite a bit of time, doesn't it? And, I, and two, one thing I notice with charcoal is all of our values always end up tending to be like really light, right? We don't have a lot of heavy, hard values happening in the fabric. It tends to be, well, of course, because we're working on white fabric here, um, these much softer kind of changes to subtle grays than any real heavy heavy deep dark value shape. You can obviously still have some of those stronger value shapes. I'm certainly not saying they won't be there, but I just find that I certainly don't seem to have as many of them. I'm going to work my way down towards the front edge of this fabric. And building these drawing skills, it's, it's just time. And sometimes that can be the most frustrating, right? We, we have to put away that like instant gratification. I just want to look great immediately and really put in the, the time and effort. This, this will go slow. And that's, that's okay too. And working on that patience for us is not necessarily a bad thing. You can see I really like the charcoal for this uh, part of the fabric because you can get really beautiful soft values with it pretty easily. One tricky thing too is you really do want to kind of like fade and soften your edges. You'll notice very few of your folds in your fabric. Just by the nature of the material will end with like a true, you know, hard edge. And most of them have kind of like a fade out. They just like fade. Fade away. Okay, that looks.
looks pretty good. Let's work our way to some of this complexity down here. And then we'll be ready to switch over to our, whoop, gotta get that highlighted edge back, switch over to our um, white charcoal pencil. And don't give be patient with yourself don't get frustrated this takes so much practice and the more you practice good observational drawing just the better you get at it folds in the front to handle and then the rest will all be done in light. Okay, so let's come on down here and start looking for some of these last value shapes on the front edge of this fabric. Again, use your shade guard looking at it and going like, ooh, I don't know about this doesn't, this doesn't look, or it looks like I might smudge, you know, trust your instincts. Use that shade guard if you think, uh-oh, I'm going to have a smudging situation here in a minute. over under themselves. Okay. Excellent. That looks pretty good. Just layering in a little bit more charcoal where I see some of those darker bits happening. And already we've created quite a bit of three-dimensional volume, but it's really going to sing um, once we start adding those lights and those highlights. Or I'm sorry, not highlights, light value shapes.
that's not quite that dark under that corner. Now you still want to watch for whether a value is dark or light or kind of a middle. That value control is important. just get better by drawing every day folks the more you can draw the better you will get at it it's like practicing a musical instrument it's like doing your sports right the more you do it the better you're gonna get okay now we do have some pretty dramatic cast shadows happening underneath these um these fabrics so I'm gonna put in some heavy charcoal here that define where my fabric ends. And then after this, we'll leave the dark. I'll layer up quite a bit of charcoal there. And then we're gonna get into the light. And we can really, wow, that's got, that's got some volume to it. That looks 3D. Love it. Okay, let's, uh, yep, let's do a good blend. I may need to go back, just depending on how this blends out. I may find myself having to go back and layer in some more charcoal, just where it would be darkest. You know, nothing crazy, nothing nuts. But just where it would be its darkest value. But so far that's uh you know that's looking pretty good. Don't think I'll need to do that. I think I will need to go back and touch up my outside edge of the shadow with the eraser. And again I'm still drawing with the blender with the Q tip. We're not just smudging and smearing, we're directing that charcoal where to go. Hey, choo, oh, bless me. Quick tissue break. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, folks. Okay. Oh, yeah, you know, I'll probably have to go in and layer in a little bit more. Okay, let's do a quick tidy up with the eraser. There we go. Okay. Yeah, and a little bit extra. Just extra charcoal there. Okay. Whoops. I lost a Q tip. Rolled away. All right. Now, what we're going to do, we have our shadows established. We're going to use our shade guard well because right, we don't want to smear, and trust me, this will smear. Okay, we're going to go in and now with our white colored pencil and a clean Q-tip, which I think I'm going to have to grab here. Okay, we're going to work in our light values. Yeah, I'm going to have to grab a clean Q-tip. So, pause for a moment, be right back. And I'm back. Clean Q-tip. Okay. <sighs> Ugh, once again, sorry about that, folks. Boy, my nose is just dripping. Okay. All right, clean Q-tip. We don't want to use the... Um, already used q-tips in this because we'll just end up smearing um, the gray charcoal into the areas that we want to be the lighter values so now what we're doing is we're doing the exact opposite we're looking on the fabric for areas where we see those brightest lightest values happening so you're gonna work your way down 
the fabric and look for those bright white areas. Now with the white charcoal pencil, what you're going to find is you do actually have to use a firmer pressure to really get it to build in, right? Where the black we're using really light, delicate. With the white, we got to really be a bit more aggressive. It takes a little bit more oomph to get to get it to, to blend in there. And ooh, already you're going to start seeing that fabric really come to life. Looks fantastic. This is truly just a drawing study. You know, we're not, uh, what's nice about the tone paper is we don't really need to do a background with it. We're just exploring this new media, which I hope you're enjoying. You know, it's fun to get messy sometimes and really smudgy. Now, same thing with your blending with the white charcoal. You are not smearing it everywhere. You are directing it. Your blending tool is another drawing tool. You are directing and moving that charcoal. Now, it's not that it's going to be everywhere, right? You're not going to have bright white everywhere. You're just looking for where you see the lightest areas. Some of it will stay just kind of the gray. But where you see those brightest, lightest values, you definitely want to get in there and put down some of the white charcoal. Now because this flat section is catching so much light, there's definitely quite a bit of it happening in this large kind of flat section of fabric. Okay, let's take our clean Q-tip. Now that fabric is coming to life. Beautiful. Okay, let's move on to our other light edges here. I've got a lot of bright white happening. Tilt your pencil too to the side. Sometimes you can get kind of an annoying squeak. That starts to happen uh, with a uh, with the white charcoal pencil, and I find that if you tip your pencil to the side, that really definitely uh, helps that. Again, you're just looking for these really light value sections. You're almost looking for the areas kind of 
I don't want to say in between because you don't want to just shade in the light in between your form shadows because that gray really does serve a purpose. You know that that middle tone is for some of those less bright areas. where not as much light is hitting everything. All right, cool. And uh, let's see, yeah, definitely the top edge of this fabric, I see. This gets pretty much kind of darker grays under here, but this has definitely got some brightness to it here. Excellent. Uh, maybe a little bit out here. Just a little bit though, not a ton. have it. Artists of Art 8 fabric folds. Let's get my stuff out of here. Now the last thing we want to do, okay, let's get our materials to the side, is just erase any extra little, you know, prints we see happening off to the side. And then I actually like to take my white charcoal pencil and give it its final signature at the bottom to show that we are complete with this draw along. Gorgeous, and there it is. Our completed fabric exploration soft folds with charcoal. Thanks for joining me today in the art room and continuing to build those drawing skills as we work towards our big still life unit. All right, take care all. I'll see you again soon, bye-bye.